So one of the questions people always ask me, Eric, what if I don't qualify for a set aside? So the first thing is, listen, set aside contracts are for companies who are looking to be prime contractors. So go back and watch my video on do you have what it takes to be a prime contractor? Do you have past performance, experience? Do you have a team? Do you got vendor credit, supplier credit, any of those types of things like that? So if you don't have that, then set aside contracts might not be the way to go because again, the idea is you're gonna be the prime contractor getting the contract in your hand. So again, if you can't perform, then there's no sense of even worrying about becoming a prime or pursuing a set aside because you don't have the ability to perform a contract. Um, now, some other ideas about it is you could potentially partner or team with someone, but unless you are in that mindset or you've already committed to doing that, um, if you have not, then you may, this may not be the way to go for you. Again, now, if you are uh, a prime contractor or you want to be a prime contractor, then absolutely I would agree that maybe it might be in your best advantage to pursue a set aside. So again, if you're going to the saying, okay, let's say my company does video production, I've got a small team of people, and we decided we want, we, you know, we have the ability to be able to do perform and execute the contracts on our own. We don't need to hire any outside people or maybe a small percent of the work will actually sub out, maybe the video editing, things like that. But we're gonna be doing capturing all of the information ourselves, capturing the video, setting up, we've got our own cameras, we've got our own equipment, we have the resources to fly out to the government site. If you've got all that stuff, then it may be in your advantage, yes, to pursue a small business certification. But if you don't have that and you're saying, I'm confused or I'm unsure about what I should do getting in this government marketplace, but I'm gonna go ahead and get service disabled certification or I'm gonna go ahead and get 8A. Um, if you're confused or you don't have a product or service, then I don't see that as your best route to take per se. Um, and so what we did is um, I went ahead and grabbed a, I made a video earlier about FBO and how I looked at like all of the opportunities that exist today and then determining how much of that opportunities in FBO are set aside exactly for 8A, hub zone, veteran owned, things like that. So I made that video. We're gonna go ahead and take you over to that clip so you can watch it and see kind of what I mean about not being a whole wide range of opportunities in FBO for set aside contracts for people wanting to pursue um, these set aside programs. So again, just touching on the question that people say, well, what if I don't qualify for a certification? That's okay not to qualify for a certification because chances are 99.9% .9 of us are eligible as regular small businesses to start working in this marketplace. Um, so if you find that you're not particularly qualified for any type of certification, that's no hindrance or impediment to you getting started in the marketplace. There's all kinds of ways that you can jump in. You can, you can work uh, in this marketplace as a technical writer, as a proposal writer. You can actually help out uh, as a project manager. You can work as a 1099er. Um, you can work on the teams of other people who are getting contracts so that you can learn the business. There's, there's, there's literally probably dozens, if not hundreds of opportunities in this marketplace for those who want to get involved and start small and grow them their way up, learning along the way, so that when the time comes and you're ready to actually open a business, you can jumpstart inside and you already have some experience and you already kind of have an idea of how this thing works. So let's take you over here to the screen right now to watch the video. All right, so what I was, what I did just now, um, we went ahead and created this little spreadsheet in Excel based on the information and today's FBO listing, um, really, uh, if you pull up, all I did was I went into FBO, looked at opportunities list, um, it automatically says 90 days, and then uh, you'll see, depending upon what you check, what will show up. If, let me just clear the box so we can show you guys. Right now it shows, uh, oh, let's go back to the 90 days. So 90 days, search. Now it's at 27,642 opportunities. Earlier there was 27,612, but we could change that. Okay, so that gives us 27,642 opportunities. And then what you could see is I went ahead and typed in or clicked the either 8A, Hub Zone, Woman Owned, Veteran Owned buttons, and that gave me these results. So let's just, I'll just show you really quickly. You type in 8A, hit search. Gives you 208, which we have. Take that off, choose hub zone, search. Gives you 137, we've got that number. Same thing, veteran owned. And again, anyone could go out and do this. 
Um, you guys can play with yourself because it's 57 results. Um, respectively, women on 91 results. Earlier it was 96. Let's change it to 91. Um, and as you can see, this data is changing rapidly, right? People are putting information in, taking information out. So it's changing constantly. Because again, when I first created this sheet, it was about maybe 20 minutes ago. So it's the information is changing. But nevertheless, more or less, this is what you end up with. Um, and then the biggest of them all, I put in total small business set aside, small social small business and emerging small business, click search, and I ended up, ugh, the 90 days changed. Hold on. All right, 75.11, at the time it was 75.05. Um, doesn't really make much difference, but uh, you can see here. So the, the, the point is, when we're looking at this particular chart, a lot of people, they're saying, Eric, what if I don't qualify for a set aside? And so what I'm saying to you is that um, nowhere in here am I getting indications that you need an actual set aside to get the contracts. In fact, the only place where I see that they're even remotely close in, again, FBO, we're talking about people looking at FBO and jobs. The only place that I see that the government's even remotely close to um, hitting their goal or exceeding their goal is with the veteran-owned small business, service disabled veteran-owned small business. So again, if I had to make a recommendation for someone to, to that was eligible for certifications, which ones to get, um, obviously based on what I'm looking at the data suggests veteran-owned small business or service disabled veteran-owned small business, those are definitely certifications that you need to even be eligible to compete in that marketplace. But when we're talking about like 8A and HubZone and woman-owned businesses, as you can see, the, the advertised solicitations, what's actually being posted and advertised doesn't warrant getting yourself certified, right? Um, so, and again, I'm just looking at raw data here. So what I'm telling people out there is because people come to me all the time and say, Eric, if I don't qualify for a set aside, should I be working this marketplace? And the answer is absolutely yes. I mean, if you if you have a business um, that can compete, that can uh, do contracts, that does uh, good quality work, that has teams and past performance, or if you know someone that meets all these requirements, then you absolutely 100% unequivocally, you should be participating in the federal government marketplace. However, um, when it comes to the set aside piece, there are always, always, always tens of thousands, correctly, tens of thousands of companies that are willing, ready, and able for you to use their certifications in order to facilitate getting a contract award. But that's only in the case that you need it. Um, this is the chart here, and you can see the data clearly shows, again, if you're, again, if you're following the data, it clearly shows that uh, 8A company, hub zone, veteran owned. These things are not widely advertised in FBO. So what does that mean? Eric, does that mean I shouldn't get it at all? No, 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 no. That's not what we're saying. What I'm saying is this for the majority of people out there who are going to be looking at, uh, bidding projects off FBO, um, like just going after solicitations, RFPs, RFQs, without doing any type of business development, without doing any type of market research. So for those persons or companies out there who plan on doing that, um, then what I would say for you is there's no reason to get a certification. I mean, you could jump on board right now on FBO and just start bidding products because uh, if you're registered in SAM, um, then typically you're already self-certified as a small business. So again, you're going to be declaring your revenues and income. And for the for 99.9% .9 of us out here, you're going to be considered a small business under the uh, standard size table for small businesses. So again, no worry about having to jump out and get certification because if your job is or your mentality is, hey, look, I'm just going to big projects, then you don't have you don't need a certification to do that because the majority, the bulk of everything that's in here is small business. So again, I wanted to show this data because again, a lot of people are coming to me saying, Eric, um, you know, what if I don't qualify for a certification? I, I you know, and my answer is unless you are pursuing op uh, opportunities with the VA hospital, um, then I don't see why you would need a certification to get started. All right, so that means get started, jump on board. Um, we're happy to have you. 
We're happy to teach you lessons. We want more good quality contracts out there helping uh, our United States government further its efforts and missions work. So again, we welcome all of you out here to jump on board and participate in this government marketplace. We're looking for great small businesses. We're looking for great businesses altogether. Um, so I hope that this kind of clarifies or adds another level of data to some of the people out here who are confused about being certified. Now, with that said, for all the people who have certifications, what should you be doing? Well, again, if you can see here that the data suggests there are no opportunities presently, and let me rephrase it, not, I wouldn't say no opportunities, but there's very far few in, in between opportunities for those persons who are certified on FBO. What does that mean? That means that you're going to have to go other places to find out where the contracts are because they're out there. Because we can see when we're looking at the uh, SBA's reporting for contracts and hitting their goals, we know that these agencies are making their goals and their numbers. Um, so if they're not doing an FBO, where are they doing it at? And so that's your job and that's what your task with finding out is, okay, I know that the government's buying my services. I know that they're using women-owned businesses. I know they're using 8A firms, but where are they? And so you now are tasked with, okay, finding out where these opportunities are, how do I get a hold of them, who should I be talking to, that kind of stuff. So, you know, for those firms that are currently certified as 8As, hub zone, um, women-owned small businesses, you want to know, okay, listen, Eric, if they're saying it's a 5% goal and less than 1% of the contracts are published in 8A, or 8A contracts are published in FBO, where's the rest? You know, uh, if they're talking about here, same thing, hub zone, 3% goal, 0.5%. And FBO, you know, so where are the rest of all those contracts at? Same thing with veteran. Um, and again, well, veteran and service disabled kind of go together hand in hand. So for them, and I and I don't want I want to make sure I don't misrepresent this. The veteran and service disabled is three percent, not three and three, so it's not six. So um, let me. I really those really should be clumped together. So for the purposes of not confusing people, let me clump these together. I don't want people to, let me take and clump these together. And then that way, we don't have misinformation out there. All right, all right, perfect. So again, the veteran owned, service disabled veteran owned, are just 3% goals. But when you, again, when you clump it together, they're the only ones that it appears that, that are actively, you can actually literally go on FBO and bid those projects without having to do any type of business development, any market research. Now, uh, again, you know, history tells me that the person that does that is going to have a greater advantage over the ones that don't. But it's not as though you can't just walk up to FBO and start actively pursuing contracts and be competitive. Um, but, you know, you can. However, again, if you go one or two steps further and start doing some of your business development, getting to know people, attending site visits, attending meetings, attending workshops, that's gonna increase your chances that much more. Uh, but for the rest of us out here who have uh, no certifications or may have one of these other certifications that are not posting jobs, we're gonna have to do a little bit more. We're gonna, we're gonna need a greater, uh, wider understanding of the federal marketplace in order to really take advantage of being our small business status. So, and we'll, and we'll talk about that in some other videos. But again, I just wanted to show you guys here some of the data and what the data suggests. So when you're out there and you're thinking, okay, um, I'm not crazy, you know, this, you know, I don't see anything out there. So maybe there's nothing out there. And you might find the same situation with your specific NAX code. You may go out and search for contracts using your NAX code on FBO and run into the same situation that there's not a lot of active projects. That doesn't mean they're not doing the work. It just means that they're not posting them on FBO. There's a different way that they're buying those contracts. And it's up to you and your team to figure out which way that they're buying those contracts that you are looking for. So again, if you're making t-shirts, if you're providing IT services, if you're doing network marketing, whatever the case may be, um, you've got to go out and find how they're buying that service and then solicit them that way. Okay. Hope this video helps. We'll see you next time. So Eric, if what you say is true, then why is everyone telling us to go out and get certified? Well, first and foremost, there's a couple of reasons why people tell you to get certified. One is, and I like to say this, is that um, there's all these third-party certification companies out there that make their money helping small businesses get certified. 
They don't actually know how to teach you how to get a contract. So the only way that they can make money off of you is by helping you do your registration and certification. Um, not that they're doing anything illegal. It's just that they are over, um, they're literally, they're stretching the, 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 the opportunity for certifications. They are exaggerating um, all that comes with it, and they're not exactly telling everyone how much work is involved in actually getting the contract, right? So again, the government being risk averse, they're not taking a whole lot of chances on new upcoming and startup companies. This is a, a major concern with the Department of Defense. However, they haven't figured out how to fix this problem yet. So again, and back in the, like to say the 90s and early 2000s, you know, certifications were the thing because again, no one knew about certifications. And so the majority of all the contracts that were posted, they were, you know, using all these certifications. But now that um, everyone knows about them, it's nothing new. And so this is being pushed across by some of these major third party certification companies. They're pushing certification, certification, certification. Um, it's the only thing that they know. And so hence, it, they're not really helping when they're saying, okay, everyone go out and get certified. The government's saying, okay, you know, you're just like the other last guy who was certified. Um, and then the other th thing is that the government's having problems with some of the small businesses, um, their ability to be able to perform, their ability to be able to execute work. Um, and so what's happening is they're getting, they're not getting away from the certifications. They're just using companies that are tried and true who have the existing certification. So again, they're taking their existing companies who are already proven and saying, asking them if they have the ability to bring on someone who has a certification to meet the requirement. So again, that's one of the ways that I stress if you do or if you have a certification or if you want to figure out how to leverage certification, it may be in your best interest to work with a larger firm or to work with someone who has some experience who's proven themselves. Um, so that's the reason why I say, you know, it's, it's not that the people are doing anything wrong. However, um, what I'm finding is there's so many people that have certifications and don't know what to do with it that um, the fact that just getting the certification alone is not going to guarantee anybody work. And I just want to be clear on that. You know, they're great. Certifications are great to have if you know how to use them. But at the same time, with the amount of paperwork and reporting that has to be done, um, it may you may find that it actually uh, hinders you or your ability to be able to actually go after products because you're so bogged down with trying to keep up with all of the uh, requirements that, to maintain the existing status or the certification level. So again, um, it's a matter of personal preference, a matter of personal choice. But one of the things I like to say is let your market research guide your activities. So again, if uh, the market research indicates that the types of products that you're looking for, the types of contracts you're looking for warrant having a certification, then I would say go for it. If it doesn't indicate that, then I would say uh, pursue opportunities as a, just a regular small business and start to make friends um, inside the government. Start to have uh, conversations with people about set aside opportunities, about simplified acquisition. Um, that is going to far, far, far exceed all the certifications um, combined in the near future. But for now, um, it's a way for any one of us, regardless of who we are, to break into the marketplace, whether you're small, whether you're big, whether you're inexperienced, or you've had a ton of experience. Simplified acquisition is a neutral platform that can be leveraged to the full extent, and we're not taking advantage of it, all right? So we'll keep watching, we'll keep talking, and we'll keep having conversations about how to win contracts using Federal Arena.